我很珍惜微博世界带来的很难得的发言机会。如何做一个合格的公民，如秋水长天？我大概要讲的内容就是如何在一个不正常的世界，做一个正常的人。One of China's leading, if controversial, writers, Mu Rong Xuechun, represents a new breed of urban writers on the Chinese mainland. Without the use of grand backdrops as settings for his novels, Mu Rong instead writes about individuals living in China's booming cities. Before the rise of online literature, Chinese literature had long been flat and boring, even dull. I always joke that Chinese literature for the past 60 years has centered on only three subjects: China in the period between 1912 to 1949, China's rural villages, and then its rural villages from 1912 to 1949. But very few books drew attention to real life and the suffering of individuals. It was only during the internet age that a group of people, including myself, started to change that, though not intentionally. No offense to grand subjects, but it's more important to write for ourselves. Mu Rong's first novel, "Leave Me Alone," a novel of Chengdu, was published on the internet forum Tianya in 2002. Since then, it has received more than a billion hits online. In 2009, the novel was published in English and was nominated for the prestigious Man Asian Literary Prize. I think that's the reason why the Chengdu novel became so popular online, and it was probably not even well written or my best work. I think it's because I was the first to focus on stories about average individuals. I am lucky to get some attention simply because at that time. There were only a few writing such things. Through his books, Murong has cast light on the dark, bizarre, and corrupt side of contemporary China. He revisits those themes in his latest work, China in the Absence of a Remedy. I think common sense is the remedy. For this book investigating pyramid selling, I went to Shangrao in Jiangxi, posing as a businessman. I lived for 20 days with pyramid scheme sellers. I tried to understand why people would be blind to their stupid lies. My conclusion was that many are deceived because they lack the common sense needed to see through such dumb scams. For instance, it's common sense that if you're hungry, you eat. It's logical to have food when I'm hungry, but if someone stops me from doing so, he's my enemy. People brainwashed by a pyramid scheme, however, think they're hungry because they're shouldering a mission. They believe they suffer hunger because it's a way for them to develop a stronger spirit. Isn't that ridiculous? But this truly happens, and such examples abound. An active user of Weibo, the Chinese mainland's equivalent of Twitter, Murong has attracted more than two million followers since he joined three years ago. I can feel the change Weibo has brought to Chinese society and the way we live. Weibo has been a great tool to hold government officials accountable. Another thing Weibo has done is to retrace history that has been tampered with or obscured. For example, what was the Great Famine? Was the Great Famine the same as the so-called three-year natural disasters? And what was the Cultural Revolution all about? The most valuable thing about Weibo is not the sharing of different points of view, but rather the fact that it spreads news. For example, if there was something happening in Wukong and Guangdong, then two minutes later I'll find out about it in Beijing or Harbin. Secrets are the best weapon of an authoritarian regime. When we reveal secrets, it literally means the regime is disarmed. The book I'm writing now is called A Family of Liars. I was going to call it Liars Kingdom, but I thought that title would run into trouble. The book is about liars in China and how they lie or cheat. After this book, I plan to write one which I may call "The Love and the Famine." It is a love story set during the Great Famine of 1958 to 1962, and this will be the first time that I leave contemporary China and set a story in a past age. Mu Rong is no stranger to Hong Kong. He says the city offers freedoms not available back home. I feel a sense of relief every time I cross the border. It's probably because I come from a world with more anxiety and pressure. On this side, I have access to many things. 
I can use Google without restrictions. I can update my status on Facebook or check my Twitter account. I hang out with my friend in Hong Kong and sometimes I will go to the Foreign Correspondence Club to meet and chat with friends or catch a show at the Fringe Club. But mostly I spend time visiting bookstores in Mong Kok and Wan Chai. Every two or three months, I come to Hong Kong just to buy books. To me, Hong Kong is a very important city where I'm exposed to different types of knowledge and information that enrich me spiritually. A powerful China should not only mean government wealth, but also the safety, happiness, and health of its citizens. China's rise should not only mean an economic boom, but also the growth of culture, arts, and philosophy. In addition to wealth, the country should build a civil society, and military power should be developed along with mercy and kindness. I wish for China's rise, but a rise that safeguards fairness and human rights, not at the expense of dissenting voices.